Hello and welcome to Down the Slope. I'm back in the hot seat and I am joined by two of my fellow co-hosters, talk pishers, down the slopers. Greg and Harry. Liam's out of action tonight, probably recovering from a hangover. Um, Greg, we'll come to you first. How you doing, my man? Yeah, not bad, mate. Good session. <laughs> Harry? No, you can the rules, mate. Hibs are shite, Harry's shite, but let's, let's just... Jumper? Fuck it. Um, I have a Christmas top on. I um, it's. I, I went to the gym at like half eight this morning, and then I got back and done some cleaning. I was like, I'm I'm going to my chilled chilled vibes today. So I, I, I popped on. It's like you can when you get Christmas jammies and they're comfy as I wear these all years around. Like yeah, I think they're class. <laughs> fair enough. To be fair, I think that's the one thing that you could say like that, like Greg, when they jumped in your throat for. Um, because as much as our listeners might not, uh, assume it, given his general bahumbug tone, you'll not meet a person that loves the Christmas period more than that man. I really? actually love Christmas. Genuinely, mate. I love it. I didn't nick in that. That's quality. Do you know, do you know what I do hate? I do hate Halloween because mm. Halloween is just an interruption. I think they just not go through this last week. But but as soon as Halloween's out the way, it's Christmas. Halloween shit. The first of November. It's Christmas. Well, like, do you know I... what I'm happy? I'm happy for anyone to come in here and challenge me about that. But I, I absolutely <laughs> love Christmas. That is the best time of year. Fact. Right, surprise presents. We got the news last week that Rocky and Kevin Dabrowski were going to be injured for uh, what was it, significant periods of time. I think the Rocky one says looking like two months, which meant obviously Paul Hanlon kept his spot in the starting 11, even though he'd been uh, subbed off after half an hour against Rangers. And then there was obviously a few other changes, Harry, in the starting 11, most notably probably for everyone, other than that, was the midfield free um, that we've seen time and again last season. Of the three of us, you were probably most vocal before the game. I, was it a frustration to see that lineup? Was there any hope that it might be different under new management? Like, what's the reverse of the phrase? If it's not broken, don't fix it. Like, if it's broken, <laughs> it's just, fuck, just, leave, just leave it. it. <laughs> just let it, let it ruin. I just, I just didn't get it because, like, as, as I've said, like, I think the three players, like Campbell, in recent weeks especially, has shown that he's got value. Um, Doyle Hayes, I think, has looked pretty good this season, and John Yule's obviously. Like we've we've been over John Yo. He has one good game in ten, and then we all forgive him for the next three weeks, and then we get frustrated with him before he has a good game again. Um. But the three of them have proven time and time again they don't work well together. So stop playing them in the same team. Like, either drop... Like, I don't... Like, Kenna obviously made a mistake for the Livingston goal. I don't know why he's vanished out of the team. Okay, it's absolutely sense, ridiculous. It? No, it's, it's just stupid. And, like, see, the thing is, Lee Johnson clearly knows football. He's managed, like, 450 games or something. How can you watch that midfield trio that literally don't exist in a football game and continue to play them? It's just utter lunacy, and I don't get it. Any further thoughts? Um, not really. <laughs> um, the, the same, the same midfield that I've had two managers sacked. Uh, yeah. yeah, do you well, know? What? Um, well, yeah, I mean, obviously, I said to you guys before the game, like I'm going to try and not, like, having seen Johnson's tendency in the last two games to make changes in the early stages of games, I've just, I've decided that. I'm not going to get my knickers in a twist over starting starting 11s. And it felt almost inevitable for me that that was going to be the midfield three, given Campbell's good performance against uh, against Rangers. Now, obviously, I know a lot of that didn't actually come in the centre midfield, but I didn't expect us to go with that sort of what he tried to start against Rangers in that sort of 3-5-2 counter-attack, would you call it, sort of way, Yuan and Boyle as your two strikers. So I did expect to see some reshuffling. And I think the one that frustrated me the most was, I think we're all on record now, that the, there's this big question over Bojang, isn't there? Um, to, we, before 3-3, three, three, it makes sense. You know, I think we've seen the best of Yuan coming off the left. We know Boyle's best off the right. But Dodge continues to get the nod, be that off the bench on the start and 11 um, over Bojang and really since the Clyde game and a lot more minutes he's probably not done you know since Bojang was available for selection and a lot more minutes he's not really done anything for me that would deem him worthy of the golfing minutes between the two Harry before the game did that worry you straight away or did you think it might have been a game that suited Dodge with the two faster players beside him 
I just it's frust- the, the worst thing that could have happened to him this season was him scoring a hat trick against Clyde because that's literally the only thing he's done all season that's worth salt. Like he's literally been terrible since League Cup. Like he, even even the games after that, he was terrible in the other games that he featured in the League Cup. He was fantastic against Clyde. He played a really good half and then didn't really do anything in the second half. But he's done nothing for the best part of two months now, and he's getting a start. And the thing is with Bojang, we all fought young guy from a league that we don't know. It's a bit of an odd one. At least he'll get a shot. And what's the point in us paying this boy and getting him training with us if he's not going to get any game time? It's not like he's our player and we can loan him out. There's, I just, I don't get it. I don't get it. There's a lot of things that are confusing me at the moment, and that is one of the big red flags right there. I, I, see, the thing is with Deutsch, the only reason Lee Johnson's keeping him around is because he's got a girlfriend locally. Like, that is the most stupid reason I've ever heard for not moving a player on. I do think a lot, no, I think a lot has been made of that. And I, you know, I think. On reflection, it was probably a stupid comment, but there's definitely was. bigger factors, I think, than that. Ultimately, he's got a two-year contract still at the club, and he's well within his right to say, if I'm leaving Hibs to stay in Scotland, I want to play in top flight, which I believe is the, the speed in the chat that we've seen in the papers. And, you know, at the end of the day, we offered him that contract. I believe it was Jack Ross and potentially still Graham Maffey that were... Um, in situ at that point in terms of I don't think Ian Gordon was sort of in in the sort of recruitment side and stuff not that I don't know how much impact he would have on renewals at this point but Greg you were not impressed with that starting 11 and is it just a bit disheartening when you see how many of last season's team are still in there in terms of starting games and what are we on the sixth game of the season was that fifth sixth sixth yeah, I mean, it, it's just so samey from last season. Um, for me, Junior does not deserve to start games of football for the club. Sorry, um, it was the fifth game. My apologies. I would I would rather have Ken on there and play maybe Donald Hayes and, and Campbell further forward. I don't really see what Junior brings to the table at the moment. Um, again, don't like to see Hanlon in the start of 11, but you've, you've literally got no choice at the moment. Yep. Because there's injuries. Um and then Dodge up front, we've already touched on it, but he is he's not even close to being miles off it. He's just he, he's genuinely galaxies away for being close to mm. anywhere near starting. Um you know, I think people would rather see Bojang and make their own mind up on him rather than see Christian Dodge start every week. Well, that's, um, and I think he's... nobody likes seeing this with Deutsch. He is generally a player mm. that most play most fans. I think he's always had his doubters, but I think if there was a player in the squad that you had to say, "Yeah, that's someone I really want to do well," Deutsch would be right up there, you know, because ultimately it'd been a really good signing until his injury last season. He even started last season well as well. Like, it just it just doesn't look the same player from well ultimately this time. A year ago, mm-hmm. give or take. And then, uh, obviously, Lee Johnson says that he doesn't think anyone will, will move on this window. So, I mean, what does that mean? Does that mean that now we can't get anyone else in? Or, yeah, I feel like, I, I guess we'll come on to talk about it later. But, yeah, I'm, I'm just feeling very frustrated with the, with the club at the moment um, and the team and the selection. It, it's... We just do the same things. We revert back to the same stuff. It doesn't work, but yeah. but we do it. We do it every few weeks without fail. So, I don't know. right. I mean, you, you say a new manager is going to bring in new ideas, but it's the same shape. So, so what? What is the problem? These players must be unreal in training. Like, must Aye. be unreal. Right. Let's actually move on to the game. Uh, Harry Hibbs actually started okay you know if we were definitely in the ascendancy, in the ascendancy in terms of being on the ball and it was a semi-positive start and then St Mirren scored so sort of, you know I know I know that sounds so simple but it felt like the first time St Mirren touched the ball they got in behind us and, and scored a goal that ultimately a million phases we could have done better and then lead up to it it was it was just a really poor goal to concede. I mean, obviously, it's it's nice that we started the game with some intensity. Um, it's difficult to say how much how long that could have continued if we hadn't conceded the goal. But first of all, Marshall needs to do better with his kick out. Yuan needs to be stronger when holding the ball up. Chabria 
can't misjudge a ball that badly and let it get over him. Um, by that point, I think four players, you can count them on your fingers, how many are out of position by about three yards. Yeah. Um, and then obviously there's a free man in the middle of the box and everybody He's else. His saunters in, there's nobody, nobody near him at all. Hey, Cadden's tucked right, right into the back post. Hanlon's obviously trying to fill in for uh, Chibraya. Chibraya. is again, for me, overcompensated when trying to cover, you know, like he did against Hearts. Like, he's again found himself in a bit of no man's land, I think, to give him maybe a slight bit of credit. I think Curtis Main might be, you know, making a run across the front post, but it was just such an easy goal to score that early in a game. And Greg, it just feels like I know obviously St Johnston we scored we we ultimately scored first, we scored on the goal of the game, but we're just not starting games well at all, are we, at this point in the season? No. Um, Other than maybe hearts. And even then we comes, Well, I mean even then, you know, we still conceded. Mm-hmm. Um I think it comes back to the question we had the other week is why does it seem that Hibs can only put one good half of football together and not two? But the weekends you got none. Right, so, you, got, you got two. You got, you got two consistent uh, at the weekend. You know, we don't start games the right man. And I think, I think this was an issue under Jack Ross. I remember us for a few weeks solid just talking about why we can't start games properly. Um, I, I really don't know. It, it seems like a lack of desire. To, to make things work early on um, and then after after six minutes you're one nil down and we don't we don't like scoring all that um, much to be fair especially when we start games like that um, we certainly don't score in the first half of games anyway so you need to do all your work in the second half Without fast forwarding too much Harry I think it's fair to say that um, the next stop was half time um, Dodge, I think, had a flicked header that went just past the far post from a Portress cross. It wasn't a chance, uh, you know, yeah. it, was, it wasn't a chance. It just they, they actually done all right with it, to be fair. Um, half time comes, and as I said earlier, I wasn't too worried about starting 11, albeit not in, infused by it because I thought Johnson, if it wasn't working, would change it. He doesn't. <sighs> Why? You know, you know, like, like, it sort of goes against everything that we've seen from the manager in the other four league games. I think, to be honest, it's just a lack of options. I'm, I'm, I'm going to try and lift up my attitude a bit, but being honest, it is, it's feeling quite doom and gloom at the moment because who do you bring on that pitch that changes things? Like, bring on anybody to get rid of that an abomination on if, midfield. I don't know but, if that's true though, because you've got Melkerson and Henderson on the bench now. Me and neither are probably in the best form, but there are two players that you know you take off one of the midfield three. You maybe you, you take you take it from a four three three to like a four two three one if you like. You know what I mean? But it's a little bit more positive because like look, you had to get subbed off ten minutes later because it was uh, well ultimately lucky not to be sent off, but that ultimately goes then it's just a light for light change. You know, you're taking your left winger off. You're putting the life, doing it on. Like it felt for me like something could have been done at half time, and I was just really surprised. I just I really expected them to do something um, at half time because in the last two games he's not even waited till half time. I don't. I didn't. I didn't get that at all. Um, Harry, literally nothing happens in the second half other than Ellie Yuan. Uh, he had a mental five minutes. Um. What, 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 how did he not score? I just, I don't know. I, I, it's just another moment. I was absolutely baffled. I was just like, yeah, what? Like, I just, I couldn't believe it. It's one of those ones that, like, it's a lot of time in football, um, you always, oh, I could have scored that. And it's not true. But that's one of those situations where if he just uses, like, is it the outside of his right foot he uses? Yep. Why, like, any other part of your body? Like any other part of his feet, if he uses outside his left, inside left, inside right, it goes in. Why on earth would you use the right side of your foot? I think he's just fucking swung and missed, if I'm honest. Um, I think he's just shat the bed, mate, to be honest. Greg, are we starting to see in that instance, and uh, Yuan's been good for Hibs in the games yeah. previous, but 
that is ultimately five league games without a goal. He started all five, and that was his best chance. Is there just a real lack of composure? And is it starting to become a worry that our main mm. final third player, other than Boyle, who was in sort of a separate addition, mm. hasn't found in it? I don't know if it's a lack of composure because he seems to be composing the ball a lot of the time. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm not sure what it's a lack of, but for me, as as a concern, you know, it's over well, You know, he's getting assists and that, but that's good. You know, I'm, I'm pleased with that. But the fact he's not found in it yet is a concern because ultimately, for I don't know another season, it looks like it'll be relying on Boyle to score goals. Um, right, at least in some I mean, aspects. That ultimately, you know, ultimately he's there, and, and and that's his job. But you do need other people to be checking yeah. on the goals if we want to if we want to get European football next season or whatever. So that is a concern. I don't really see where any other goals are coming from. To be quite honest, it, it looks like it's pretty much a Martin Boyle show, and that's it. Um, but like I don't know what sort of you and but he seemed to have an absolute shock at the weekend. Yeah, um, I mean. I, I think we just write that off as one of the games, but he needs to really bounce back for that because that was there's bad games and then there's that. I mean, Harry, we can be going about refs enough. Um, I actually thought the ref had a really good game at the, at the weekend um, out with not sending Yuan off. Um, he had a goal at a St Mirren player right on the byline, sort of got away with it, and then two seconds later, takes the guy out right on the touchline. Um, ultimately, at that point, Hibs couldn't have had any excuse, uh, any arguments if we were down to 10 men, right? I think his first challenge potentially could have been red in yep. itself, to be honest. It's quite a reckless lunge. Um, I, I don't want to dig out players too much because collectively they've all been shite, but Yuan was absolutely pitiful. And um, one thing that's a worry is the fact that this season, even though we've had quite a few players stinking the place out, the new signings, for the most part, the ones that we thought were more marquee have been good in general, i.e. Marshall, Chabria and Yuan. Um, and yeah, seeing Chabria and Yuan, I thought Chabria had a stinker as well. I, th- I think the two of them were just really poor, which was really to the point. And obviously, um, there's other players that we can point the finger at as well and say they had poor games. I'm not sure how valuable it would be. Maybe good to get frustrations out. But yeah, Yuan just, I, his head just didn't seem to be in it. It seemed like he'd been happy to be sent off, to be honest. Yeah, so uh, the rest of the second half just followed a pattern of Hibs having a lot of the ball and doing a not not an awful lot with it. Um, ultimately, look, if Yuan scores, the, the game does go down a different route. We all know that. but So I'm not going to say and say, oh, St Mirren could have won 4-0, but they definitely had enough chances to make the scoreline more they comfortable. They definitely could have won 4-0, mate, to be honest. No, but, no, but if we're not going to, you can't say 4-0 because you're using logic that you're yeah. not applying for the U angle, but they, if there was another team, that, if there was a team that was going to score a second goal in the game, it, Hibs weren't scoring it, were they? And I think that brings us on <laughs> to, to talk about, Not we're not going to talk about the individual chances, but there was some players that really did stink the place out, Harry, at the weekend. Um, for me, the obvious ones are Ryan Porteous, Caden, Chabria, Johan and Boyle. And for me, they're probably your five best outfield players. Right. And, like, I think the biggest frustration is, and you sort of talk about that, we have all this ball in, in the second half specifically, but Chris Caden and Boyle in, in particular, we were doing pretty well in the first half down the right side and we've done absolutely nothing with it. We, we've we spoken about Cadden enough to say, oh, he's good at his, is it his deliveries, is it the strikers, is it this, is it that? The volume alone that he gets to put into the box, the quality needs to be so much better. He was, like, there, not one cross that I can remember was close and people have had a massive melt and we've spoke about Doyle tonight as well I can't think of a striker in the league that given the service that Hibs tried to give people at the weekend where they scored because I mean I've seen that what was it got a 2.6 rating on something Doyle but I don't one I don't think that's fair I don't, I, he wasn't I, I, if he was 2.6 I'd love to see what the rest of them were 
because I don't think he was involved enough to be a two point six to be honest. Because for me, two point six means you're consecutively doing things wrong. But I don't think he was getting enough of the ball to do things. That's wrong what I mean. With. That's what I mean. Like I, I thought it was really interesting that he was the one getting targeted post game. I think he got booed when he was coming off as well, which which isn't great. We've seen that. We've seen that last season. Um, but Cadden and Porteous were awful, genuinely awful. And for me, Ryan Porteous just needs to screw it up. You know, he's got this contract thing hovering over him now. And he, where are you at with a few of what would you say more influential players in the team on the back of Saturday? I, I don't know. Um, Lee Johnson came out after the game and said that he can't just give the hair dryer treatment every week because that's just not going to work with professional football players. But I, it's like they they're our best options and they're not performing and they're not like they're not just not performing. They're under par, par, performing to the extent that they don't look like they're good enough to play for the club. Like you can't consistently put in the performances that we're putting in week in week out. We've like. I don't. I hate the phrase papering over the cracks because St Johnston we put a good performance in Rangers and Hearts. I don't think we were terrible in those games. But yeah, I don't think we're. At, but if you look at how we've got points this season, like take away stoppage time, obviously a stupid way to do things. But you take away stoppage time, we've got no points. Like we we got one point against St Johnston. It's pathetic, and was... things need to start improving rapidly. I know it is. It's, Greg, it is difficult, isn't it? Because you look at that, and I, I get what Harry's saying, but I don't think in any of the games we didn't get what we deserved. Yeah, I think in every game, you know, we, we call what we deserve, but the issue that we've got is that we can't score in the first half of games, which is a big issue because, you know, I try to say you stall out early, get, get a goal, and you know, then you've got you've got something there, but I don't know. I, I really don't know what's going on. To be fair, it's it's... Like, you know, you've got you've got your strikers not doing not doing enough. You've got your wide players not doing enough. You know, said at half, we're only about to throw to any sort of minimal contact. Um, and for me, at the moment, I'm with Porteous, I'm very much either sign the contract or just go. If the other options were there. Um, to, uh, even that, though, to be honest, it's like, he doesn't look interested. He's too busy. Does every week where he just rolls about the floor for nothing. I'm getting a bit sick of it now, to be honest. Um, he, needs to, he needs to decide what he's doing. There's nothing in the midfield because it's the same midfield that we've played for more than three seasons now. Two seasons where it's still not working. Um, the real lack of creativity on that side. Um, you are had an off day, Boyle. It was pretty much non-existent, so I don't know. There's a, there's a lot, a lot to work on, and think, and also when your subs aren't even ready to come on, that fucking sums it right up. I think for me, like the midfield, what would you call? It? Albeit limited, it can be workmanlike, and and if it's got the right players that are firing around it, you know, like. Joe Newell and Jake Doyle Hayes were pretty much our consistent midfield pairing in the season we finished third in COVID. Correct me if I'm wrong. Yeah. No, that's a lot of shit. Jake Doyle Hayes wasn't even a Hibs player. Yeah, he, he I'm talking that. shit. It was Joe, Joe Newell played a lot and with Alex Gogic. But. Oh, that was a, how could I forget? <laughs> no, yeah. But <sighs> they are players that have ability. And for me, if. If you've got the, I know it's, it's so simple, but the most gearing gap for me is striker. If you're scoring goals, you talk about paper over the cracks. If you're scoring goals, it cover it hides everything. Because we've been saying now probably for what would we say since the arse end of Jack Ross's tenure, maybe October, November time. The defence are literally having to clean, clean sheets for us to get points, it feels like. You know, like, it feels like we're not going to score more than one at a push two in a game. Like, And it's been that way, I, I would say, since the back end of Jack Ross's tenure. I can't remember in the league us scoring three goals. I, 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 would the last time be our growth in the cup? And potentially 
Rangers in the cup before that? Well, Clyde, if we're counting pre so, well, but Right, so three times right. in ten months. One one thing I would say to that, though, like, genuinely, on my shopping list for Hibs, a striker's fourth. Like, I still think we need two centre-backs. I think we need a midfielder, and I think we need then I'd put a striker. But it just I shows, think, like, I the think, lack of quality we've got all over the pitch. I think for me that it's it's probably, well, it's a difficult one. I think it's the number one area where we need quality, but I think it's still probably number two in terms of priority. I think we need ultimately we need a centre half. Whether it, you know what I mean, like because you literally cannot now run with Hanlon and Porges. If one of them gets injured, then we're playing Darren McGregor at the centre half or Kyle McClellan. You know, like so. I think centre half is the number one priority, and I agree. I do think we need two, but I don't. We don't need a striker in sense of to make up the numbers. We need quality up there. You know, you've ultimately you've got Doidge and Bojang. With Nisbet to come back, where you are and Boyle, Melkerson, but you need uh, someone that can actually score. Like <laughs> I know that sounds so stupid, but you need you need someone that's got a little bit more of their game than what Doyle just given you just now. And ultimately, Bojan could be that player, but we don't know that. We're not going to see it, and the fact we're not going to see it, you would assume he's not. That that yeah. striker, uh, centre midfielder's quite low down on my list ultimately right now. As much as I would like one. I think the centre forward and the centre half is really, really what we need. But look, we've just totally digressed there, but hey, we're going to come on to it later in the episode anyway. Um, Greg, the post-game stuff, you touched on it there, um, about subs not being ready to come on. Um, what do you make of all the noises coming out of Lee Johnson's post-match interviews, be that the St Mirren fan and his response to that, I think, and being quoted at saying that, he doesn't expect much, if anything, in the transfer window. Be that Lewis Miller, like it's been there's it's been a lot more eventful after the game than during the ninety minutes. Anyway, it's embarrassing that the like, subs not ready to go on for a kick off. You know, like if you're a sub and, and you know all the subs haven't been made, then why are you not ready? You know, why have you not got your your boots on or your shin pads on or whatever? Um, so that's. I don't even you can't even class it as him being young because there's no excuse for that. He'll always be ready to go on the pitch. And um, the St. Mirren fans shouting your team's brutal. He finds it funny. I don't find it that funny to be honest. More shit. That's not funny. Um and the fact he doesn't expect much more. Also, that's it's not good enough because we need at least three. In my opinion, um, he doesn't. He doesn't think much will move on. That's because they're shit. Nobody wants them, so we're stuck with them now. But ultimately, in the day, and I think if not touched on Zayden McGeady, um, that's that's just there's no words for that. Why? Just why? Why would you not go and watch a team that the club that pay your wages? I think the I think Harry, I'll let you come in on this because well, you've definitely got more of an opinion on it than me. I have seen that that game kicked off at twelve o'clock. Was it the Hibs game? I have no idea, but I guess ultimately we wouldn't know unless someone walked up to him and took a picture, a la what happened at the Celtic B game. For those that haven't seen it, um, there's a picture circulating social media where that McGeady was taken post Celtic B playing a Lowland League team in Airdrie on Saturday yeah. lunchtime. Um, oh, that's on the back so of him being out with other members, injured members of the first team squad when we were away at St Johnston and on the opening day of the season. Um, so, yeah, throw in his penalty <laughs> comments uh, <laughs> in the Rangers game as well. Um Aidan McGeady's not, oh, good exactly, aye, he's not exactly warming himself to the fan base, Harry, is he? Like, my, my problem with McGeady is like when you're signed for a football club, obviously you're signed to play on the pitch, but you're signed to be a club representative as well. And like for me, he's someone who's had years and years, like probably 20 plus years experience of professional football. So like the players in the locker room should be able to benefit off that and should be able to speak to him and look for him for advice. If he's off at Paisley, regardless of what, or sorry, off at um, Airdrie before the game, regardless of whether he makes it in time to watch Hibs play, because like I don't want him at the game 
to watch Hibs play. I want them at the game to be able to help the coaching team. I want them at the game to be able to mm-hmm. speak to the players and stuff and be a role model in the dressing room. Like that's why I was happy with the signing. I think that on on the field, if he stays fit, I think that he can make some form of impact. But there's young players in the team. Like we've got an incredibly young squad that should be able to look to him for advice and yeah. for that role model type figure. Like in the it's not like football manager. It's not just the manager goes in, talks to team, they go back out on the pitch. Like there's discussion, there's conversation. Like everybody should be chiming in and he should be one of the leaders at Hibs. He's old enough and he's wise enough to be one of the leaders. And I, I don't know if it's like a lack of the club pressuring him to come along to games, but why the fuck's he at Celtic B game? If the club sent him there to scout, then fair enough. But other than that, it's just utterly pathetic and it makes us look like mugs. Because the thing is as well, Sorry, I've, I've started to rant. I'll stop it after this. Um, he's yeah. one of the highest earners at the club. He should be doing everything he can to make sure that we get our money's worth. But he, at the moment, I hope he proves me wrong, but he's here for a payday. That's exactly what it looks like, and that's why I'm getting a bit angsty over it. What about the rest of the post-game stuff, Harry? What do you make of the various sort of interviews that have been done? <sighs> it's neither here nor there. It's the type of thing that if we were winning games, we wouldn't care about. So I'm not going to big it up too much obviously players should always be ready but what's the point in throwing someone on at set for set pieces at the 87th minute if that was a tactic get them on at 60 just mm-hmm. stupid he's probably sat and watched Chris Cadden put the ball into play 70 times anyway and thought well fuck this if he's got 71 is too much <laughs> eight, 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 no I, I totally agree with Greg on that one I find it bizarre that a player won't like just yeah surely just have your shorts on, your socks on, your shin pads on, and your shoes tied, and throw your top on. You know what I mean? Like, I, I know I didn't, I didn't want to be uh, too simplistic about it, but it shouldn't really be that difficult. Um, no. But look, I one one of the key things that maybe we want to talk about is this jo- the Johnson comment about the transfers. We've got a time of recording. What's it? Twenty nine, forty eight hours left in the window give or take a few hours it's quarter to seven so I about 51 52 hours of the window left I despite the noise that had been coming out in the last couple of weeks pretty much since Martin Boyle signed um just assumed we would get the players we needed in because you know you hear managers all the time they're not they don't exactly come out and say I were signing three players I don't know why but I get the impression just post game that we're not going to get what we need, Greg. Yeah, which is a worry. Um, only that set and a half, but I don't know, maybe eight windows now. Um, yeah, I mean, clearly the club don't give a fuck about set and a half. Um, it was probably the weakest position, I would say. Um, we also need another couple, but look if the club aren't willing to even bite the bullet a little bit then that's up to them but ultimately they will suffer for it um, when it comes to handing out prizes at the end of the season uh, I think that's pretty poor that look I get that we've obviously signed Boyle totally get we've taken a hit on the, on the transfer fee for that but you know, sure, surely we could we could cast a net elsewhere and get a set of half in um, at least one I would take one right now but like you know I keep sick of hearing the, the same old stuff about Aye. everything's going well other than on the pitch but ultimately we're a football club football's played on the pitch so the, the other stuff's pretty irrelevant I, I, look, I get it, it's important for the club to grow financially but n- nobody really gives a fuck about the pies you're selling or whatever they want they want a winning team on the pitch they want to see the same gaps of being the team for four years whatever plugged it's not difficult you know I'm sure we always hear about how good the scouting department is and you know the list of players I'm sure there's a list of quite about 100 cent and a half that you could go out and get but we're obviously not willing to do that so it's going to hurt us in the long run until at least January and we've now got Rocky out for a couple of months and ultimately he's been our best set of half this season um, so he's out but the club aren't bothered we went out and got a goalie the same day but we can't go out and get a set of half 
I, that was exactly what I was going to say to you there, Harry. Now, we did obviously sign a, a new goalkeeper whose name escapes me, if I'm honest. Um, yeah, Ryan but, Schofield. His name is a link. Is, is the risk of reacting to the Rocky injury in a similar fashion to that that you end up with a Nathan Wood? Mate, I, it's... It's scary. I th- I think we're gonna have a Paddy Fenlon esque window. To be honest, at the end, I th- I think we might have three or four players coming in the final day. Um, I think the club are realizing the pressure they're under to get bodies in. Um, and I don't think that we're gonna see a lot of quality, but I do think we're gonna see a lot of bodies. Um, I'm gonna be positive in the sense that I think we're gonna make signing, but I don't think they're gonna be particularly long term. I- <laughs> the projects are gonna get absolutely scrapped for this one week. Um, and I. I hope that we bring in a bunch of ballers, but if we were getting ballers in, it would have been the first couple of months of the window. You don't sign quality unless you're very, very rich, and we're certainly not in terms of our regular outputs anyway in transfer window. So, yeah. Unless uh, unless we can somehow pluck Tom Roderick out of uh, <laughs> ob- some fucking obscurity. I don't, I don't even know if he's going to be uh, playing football anymore, but He's still a free agent. Right, look, we've spoken about transfers enough and we're, maybe now's a good time to plug it. Um, Wednesday, we're going to do a live episode um, via YouTube um, with some guests. No, don't get, no, we're not talking guests from the club. It's going to be guests from people we can, basically. People that listen and people that okay. want to have a chat. What we're going to do is, now apologies, can't remember who sent it in to us, but for those that are aware of it, Manchester United, they had their signings rated on Monday Night Football a um, couple of weeks ago by Jamie Carragher and Jamie Neville. They'd done a red Jamie amber Neville? green. Sorry, Jamie, Jamie Neville. Jamie, uh, Gary, Gary, Neville. And Jamie Neville. Gary Neville and Jamie Carragher. Um, and we're going to do similar um, along with the guests in regards to the signings that have been made since Ron Gordon took ownership of the club um, on the 2nd of July 2019. Um, So people like Adam Jackson, Joe Newell, Christian Deutsch, they do not make the cut as they signed prior to the the change of ownership. Um, But yeah, so that'll be on Wednesday at 7 o'clock. We'll share it on our Twitter and whatnot, but you'll be able to find us on the YouTube channel. So that'll be fun. And Moving ahead to something that happens after that. Next up, what seems like the first sort of normal league game at Easter Road for a while, Kilmarnock at home. Um, Harry, what, what do we expect this weekend and just how crucial is three points? It's it's tricky because um, every team we play at the moment just seems... Like, I think, apart from St. Johnston, every team we've played won their last game, which is just an annoyance. It's not really anything that feeds into anything, but it's quite annoying. Um, but obviously, if they... Ended up losing everyone else is fucking winning games. Yeah, exactly. If they'd ended up losing to Motherwell, they would have been five games into the season without a win. But they came back, scored a couple all right goals. Um, I don't. I, th- I think their squad's pretty far off it. To be honest, I think that Kamarnik probably need more bodies than we do. Um, if they want to be able to compete for top six, McInnes doesn't have them playing particularly nice football, but he always gets the best out of his team in terms of playing gritty football and I think that's exactly what they'll do they'll come they'll frustrate us they'll play for set pieces um, and I can't count how many times over the years we've conceded late goals to set pieces to lose points in games so um, <laughs> it could be a rough Saturday boys it could be a rough one uh, Greg how did an answer the second part of that question so just have three part? points huge mate already already in the season it's massive um, we're at risk of Drifting away from a few, a few teams that, that we would probably set our marker against, um, teams like Aberdeen, Hearts, um, obviously not so much Dundee United, but um, so no, we're four points teams. off six. You know, call it call it as you're four points off six after five games. It's really not where you want to be as early in the season. No, of it's course, not, it's but... not good enough at all. Um, the points total. Um, at the moment, is is nothing short of disgrace, to be honest. Considering who we've played, um, we would expect more points, regardless. But it is what it is. Um, already, we're, we're talking about a points gap, though. 
already. Usually, we don't start talking about that until November, September, November. Look, I, I, and, and, and I, now we're already. No, but you look at the end of the day, the, the, if we win at the weekend, the gaps could be disappeared. You know, it, it is early in the season, but look, I guess. But, but I've seen nothing from us that suggests that, that we will. Well, do anything this season. We've I, I, put I, we've put in two pretty positive performances at home against the teams that finished obviously second and third. Big games. Now I think there's a couple of outlying factors there. The attendance we know for a fact is not going to be anything close to what we've seen in the two games. Um, mm. At least I'd be surprised. Um, and ultimately, we have still scored late goals in the games to to earn points. But it does feel like. We're coming into a period which ultimately Harry probably should have started at the weekend there, where there's a run of games that you can really get your teeth into the season. I know, I know, every game's big, every game's important, every game's only three points. But you know, like when Hearts and Rangers are your first two home games, they they do sort of hit you a bit different. They do take on more significance. Is this a period where we can hopefully? whether when on Saturday really settle into the season, maybe see the team start to develop and actually play the football that they want to instead of maybe getting through games on like emotion and adrenaline. I genuinely think I, th- I think performance is more important than um points at this point. I think we're early enough in the season, like for me we just need to start getting shots on target. Um at the weekend I think we had one. Um against Rangers and Hearts I think we had maybe two against Rangers I think we had three and against Hearts we had two. Like we're just not getting shots away at all, um, and it's just not good enough. Like, I'd rather draw and get twelve shots on target than scrape a one 0 win off with one shot on target. Like, I know, that, like, signs for was, signs of optimism. I know, I know. It. Yeah, no, oh, like Johnson came in. He's done the exact same as Maloney. He talked a good game about how we're going to get us playing certain a certain style of football, and it's just not happened. Um, and it needs to start happening because I I want to be happy clapper Harry that's buzzing to go and watch Hibs every week, but. I, I could have turned that game off at half time, um, uh-huh. half time, uh, because it was just turgid. It was horrible football from yeah. both teams and it was terrible to watch. And Kamarnik aren't going to play nice football. So if Hibs aren't going to play nice football, then it's going to be another terrible 90 minutes to watch. So we need to start just getting shots on target. Uh, do you can play nice football, that, that's the thing. Yeah. yeah and we've showed oh, that already can. this season, but I don't know whether it's we, we get dragged down to, to, the, to the other team's level or whatever. But I mean, for, the, for two, the two best we, performances we, we, have been the big games at home, haven't they? Really? So, yeah, but which is also a worry. So we can only uh, turn mm-hmm. up for the, the the so-called bigger games, and and we can't go to teams like St Mirren and and Levy and get points, which is another issue in itself. Um, but look, we we need to start quick. We need to basically just get at them straight away. Put a lot of pressure on them. Um, aggressive going forward as well. I need to make sure that we're actually passing the purpose, though, because I feel like all we do is we just knock it about because well, that's what we're meant to do. You know, it's not we're not actually looking for anything. We're not actually trying to create space, but we need to, we need to start passing a bit of purpose. Try to pull teams out, um, get space in behind, get the ball out wide, and hopefully Chris Cadden can maybe put a decent ball in the box for a change. And then again, it comes back to the conversation we've already had is. And what is a decent ball in the box? Is it the striker? Is it because you're not getting on the end of it? Is that what's ma- not making it a good ball in the box? But we, I think... we can't we can't really start with Doyle's because he's not shown enough to suggest that he should be starting. Yeah, I think for me it's well, just to, what's a good ball. You want to see the balls put into a specific area or cut. You know, you want either either very deliberately try and pick someone out or put it into mm-hmm. an area. What? What I just didn't lump balls. Yeah, like, it's push. Like it's you know, like just did, like see when they just did, like they don't hit them too deep. But I think that's his, for me with Cad, and that's the one his biggest flaw. I don't even mind when they go out to play or that because every you know what I mean when you're he'll cross on the run and stuff like it's going to happen. But mm. see when it lands like on the opposite eighteenth like the opposite side of the box, meaning you've got absolutely no chance, you have to recycle it and stuff. But aye, for me, I think just to with this whole, what we're saying there, but did we get out for the big games? The, the style of play that Johnson spoke about, wanting to have a goal and not wanting to have pointless possession, I think there is some merit in saying that 
that style will only really be able to show itself against the better teams in the league because they are more likely to want to get on the ball themselves. This, I'm not slagging off St Mirren, St Johnston, Livingston or Kilmarnock. But, you know, I think the, the biggest threat we've seen this season is getting quality balls in behind fullbacks to get Boyle and Yuan on it. They need the space to operate in. St Mirren do not play as high a line as Hearts are Rangers do, nor do Livingston. They're very compact and they're very, very good at what they do. I don't expect any different from Kilmarnock. So I think it's now on Hibs to to change the way that we're trying to play. I don't think we can rely on like a 4-3-3 three, three where Yuan and Boyle get the space down the sides and then behind because I just don't see it happening. Harry, like you said, Derek McInnes is very good at, you can you know, we can say what we want, but he's very good at making his teams hard to beat. I, other than the game against Celtic, I don't think they've been beaten too badly this season. They'll be 1-0 up at County. They obviously drew with Dundee United, won at the weekend, and I think they only got beat 2-0 at Ibrox. So like they're you know they're obviously a pretty well drilled unit for me in terms of team selection. I'd like to see quite a few changes, and um, be that information as well as personnel. I'll run through what I would like to see now, and I'll see what you guys think. Marshall and goals back three of Stevenson at left centre half, Hanlon in the middle, Porteous on the right, uh, Martin Boyle at right wing back, a midfield of Newell, Doyle, Hayes, and Henderson just in front of them, Jabria on the left. And you, Anne, and Bojang up front. That would be my team. I don't know how many actual changes that is, but it feels like a big change, if that makes sense. I think Cadden needs to be dropped. Um, even if it's not into that 3 5 2, if you're still playing a flat four, start Lewis Miller. Did you say Newell as well? I said Newell because it was a toss up point between him and Campbell. In fact, you know, actually, no, I'd probably give the Newell's to Campbell, actually. For me. I'd rather have Campbell, to be honest. Uh, you know, I'd actually He's shown a lot it. more since the start of the season than Joe Newell's. No. He's just murder to watch right now. Um, I think that's fair, actually. Yeah, no, I'd be happy with Josh Campbell and there with Doyle, Hayes, and Henderson. I don't think don't you can really argue with that starting 11, to be fair. Mine doesn't. Um... We've really got no other option than. That back three, to be fair, if we're going to play three at the back, which I would like to see us do. Even though we spoke all summer, but no one in it. <laughs> um, I think if you can get Doyle Hayes or, or whatever sitting in the like Campbell and Henderson sort of drive forward, it puts a lot of pressure on on Kamarnik, and if we can get you know, balls in the, the front two and the ball out wide and then whipped in or whatever, then that'd be perfect. But we need we need to do something different because I feel like we just sort of go through the motions in some games and we don't actually try and cause anything or create anything. So we do need to really start piling the pressure on these teams and and put them under pressure. My starting eleven is quite different. If you would like okay. to hear it, absolutely. Um, I'd start Marshall and goals. I'd do a back four of Chibraya, McClelland, Porteous, and Miller. In the middle, I would put Doyle, Hayes, Stevenson, and Henderson. And then I would play a front three of Yuan Boyle and Bojang. No, actually, no. I'd put Melkson in instead of Bojang. I think that pace against this Kilmarnock team will work better than physicality. Um, so I'd have three. Can I go and run me through that again quickly? I wasn't yep. listening at the start. That's fine. Um, so back, so obviously Marshall and goals back for Chabria, Miller, fullbacks, and then McClelland and Porteous centre backs. Um, in midfield, I would start uh, Stevenson, Doyle, Hayes, and Henderson. And then up top, I would start uh, Boyle, Yuan, and Melkson. I'm not gonna lie, fast with Tiva, I'm going back up the road. <laughs> I, I think it, uh, it gives um, you a midfield that will actually that gives each other space to actually do things. It gives you three pacey options up top, which is better than having Deutsch who doesn't get involved in games. Um, Miller, if we're playing a back four, needs to start over Cadden because Cadden is just not having a good start to the season and needs time out of the team. I think at the moment, on the basis of what we've seen, I still think Lewis Stevenson is our best central midfielder. Well, it's hard, it's hard to argue with that, isn't it? the form that he showed in the second half of last season there. So I don't know if you saw it, but he played a beauty yeah. across field ball at the weekend as well yeah. towards the end of the game. Still got it. Did we, did we score from it now? <laughs> Still a good pass. Though. Oh yeah, anyway. because passes oh, aren't good unless you lead to goals. Anyway, oh, yeah. anyway, no, anyway, yeah. anyway, anyway. Score predictions. No, no. Uh, Greg took mine, so I'll say 3-0 Hibs. 
I'm going for right, this is very much in hope other than expectation. A comfortable two 0 with the peppering of the Kilmarnock goal that Harry spoke about. Two yes. 0 no yeah, two, fuck will just move. Two, two nil, but dominant. You know, like two nil, never really in doubt, and like ten plus shots on and eight, eight plus shots on target. Then fuck them on. Aye, I'm damn fuck right. Them on that actually. <laughs> although, although, although we've done that, she have scored five. Yeah. Aye. <laughs> I think there's no winning to be honest. No, nah, and we're like, just as guilty honest, as it is. <laughs> to be honest, I just want to see us score in the first half for a change. So do I, you know how much goes on, I would love? An issue that becomes. Do you know how much I would love a goal inside the first fifteen minutes at Easter Road? Like genuinely, when did the last time we seen him score inside the first fifteen minutes? Yeah. Like I, 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 especially at home, I, I can't think. I cannot think. I Point. can't even. I in the league. I can't even think he's taken the lead at home under Maloney, other than the Ross County game, which I know. Yeah, did we, ah. did we score in the first half? The last game of the season. We did, yeah. Yes. Aye, there you go. Aye, there we go. James Scott. No, Paul McGinney. Paul McGinn scored. Were we 2 0 up at half time or 1 0 up at half time? 1 0, I think. No, Paul McGinn. Should it was 1 0. Maybe we should have signed James Scott again. Eh? No, right, that's enough. <laughs> right, definitely the best part of the show. And we're going to try and be as quick fire with these as we possibly can. Wrap this up. Um, it won't be as long an episode as what we have had recently. Listener questions. Uh, we've got two come in straight away from John. Regular just clock quick. What's everyone having for tea? Sorry, there's three questions here. Uh, what's everyone having for tea? Let's do that first. And John, for the last time, it's fucking dinner. Yeah, John, at his dinner, um, you better start asking what's everyone having for a dinner, or you will be ignored <laughs> and slated. Um, I had spaghetti bolognese. Nice. I'm so. having a garlic and chilli prawn noodles. So, John, you kind of wouldn't ignore you, mate, but I'm sorry to say that uh, I'm I'm sticking to the diet, so I just had chicken, broccoli and rice. For fuck's sake. Uh, right, John's other questions. If we could bring in one player right now, who would it be and why? Liam Lindsay. <laughs> and why? Yep, I, feel like, I feel like I've started a campaign now. Even though he's playing every every minute of the game for Preston. Who, they've only conceded one goal. And they've only scored one goal. Though. Uh, <laughs> yeah, they, they can't score, but they're very good at the back. Right, Ari. We're, we're good at neither. Uh, um, double, double down to Greg. I'd get Liam Lindsay in as well. I could sign. I got Jason Kerr. He's probably no playing for Wigan. Why not? Uh, one player and why for me? Uh, I could sign one player. Does it have to be realistic? Nah, go for it. Who have well, you want to sign Stevie Mallon? He'll go. Goals done. Like, yes. <laughs> uh, right, John's final question. No one else is signed before the end of the window. Are we at serious risk of relegation or are we not that bad yet? My answer is no, we're not at risk of relegation. I do think there's enough in the squad for us to be comfortable. And I'm sticking with my commitment from the pre-season. Um, I think we'll be much, much better after the World Cup. And as long as we're there or thereabouts, I think we'll have a strong second half of the season. When I say there or thereabouts, I mean within striking distance of six points of the top four. Which is bullshit. Sorry, Ewan. I like you as a person. I think you're a decent guy, but that's absolute shit. <laughs> There's no danger that we can get to November crawl to November and then all of a sudden become world class after that it's not how it works um, we're shit I don't think we're we done it. Can, we just, can we just rewind we done it in the space of a fucking day under Neil Lennon <laughs> by the way we were fucking shit until the last day of the January transfer window then we signed Cam Berry and Scott Allen and all of a sudden we were fucking world beaters uh, we also signed Cammy Bell don't forget that no he I left on the, he fucked off on the last day of the window <laughs> no the, the last day of the window we signed him a few days before, and then he went to no, Celtic we Park didn't. as part. No, he did because he mind we... he was in for like four or five days. No, he was. That was you're thinking of Laidlaw, you know. No, no, it was Cammy Bell. We, we, we signed him. No, we signed Cammy Bell. We oh Bell. no, I'm thinking of Scott. Oh, Scott Bain. Bain. Scott Bain. Sorry, Greg. Well. I was saying. Um, also, we didn't sign Cam Berry on deadline day because he scored that night against Motherwell. Was it? It was the morning. On he deadline in the morning day. And made, he signed in the morning and made his debut that night. Did he? Honestly, aye. Anyway. Anyway, Neil I... Lennon was right about him. Do you know what? My one signing, Neil Lennon, bring him back. 
<laughs> Harry, if we don't sign anyone, are we at risk of relegation? Are we not that bad? And I like that he, quote, he ended the sentence with yet. Um, I don't think that we're worse than some of the bad teams. I don't think it's because we're good. I think there's other teams that are worse than us. Smash so it. no, no relegation. Uh, Billy, um, I, yeah, I don't, I don't think we're quite relegation yet, but it's um, maybe a slight concern that we're we're heading towards that. Uh, Billy King of the North uh, are some fans too quick to write off new signings or have they shown enough to tell they aren't good enough seeing people write off Tavares Bojang Miller and Kenna already um, well how can anyone write off Bojang since nobody's seen him I think that's Greg's answer then yes it's far too early um, in regards to them all Tavares we know is not ready yeah, whether he's good he's enough or not a is a fact. separate question, I would say, to he's whether he's physically ready. I don't think he's physically ready. Bojang and Miller. Um, well, you know, you've already decided Miller's shite, so... No, I want Miller to play. I thought he was shite at Falkirk, but I, want him, I thought he was poor. Harry, Harry, what did he say? I said he's poor. Did pony. he not say? Did I you said not Miller's say? pony. That's the text I said. Miller yeah. is pony. Three words. That was it. Not Miller's pony <laughs> tonight. <laughs> or Miller is pony so far. Miller is pony. Um, I think Ken has done enough to think to say that he's. I really agree with Harry. He's, think he's been a bit harshly dropped, albeit he wasn't great at Livy. Yeah, uh, he's been very harshly dropped. Because I tell you what, there is a lot worse than him. Agreed. That's all I'm going to eat. Even There's in a that lot game, worse than my, him. My even in that game, there's that... a lot worse than him. My two cents on Billy's question. I think a lot of football fans in general and Hibs fans have got a few that are really bad for it. Um, like to say things are shite just so if they turn out to be shite, they can be like, oh, I said that ages ago. It's a really weird, essentially, fetish that football fans have. People, I hate people it. always use the words happy to, have to be proven wrong. No, we, 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 that's because it's, it. it's a win win situation then, isn't it? Yeah, I know, but we, but, we but, don't but, like no, saying. Say if we just want to come out and be like, oh, he's shite. I, like, seen I've, I've seen someone say that minutes. Tavares will be the worst signing in Hibs history. Like, there's literally no basis for that. It's just stupid. Who is the worst signing in Hibs history, actually? Ruin Vine! It's a non contest, man. John O'Hanlon was pretty abs- bad, no, to be honest. John O'Hanlon <laughs> at least scored goals. Got yeah. us a win up at Pitondre. Like, no, My Ruin Vine. Oh, yeah, Hundi, he was horrendous. Ruin Vine! End the conversation, man. Done. <laughs> Graham Smith, oh my god, he was Ruin terrible. Fucking vine. <laughs> <laughs> oh god. You, I think Ewan maybe feels a bit strongly about that. I don't think anybody <laughs> say Harry's gonna change his mind. <laughs> Let's just move on. Uh, Next question. Mike, hi B Trucker. Why oh why do we persist with Doyle Hayes, New Evan Campbell? It doesn't work. We watched it all last season, it didn't work, so why we persist them with it? Sort of covered that, Mike already. Surely Tavares and Tate should get a run out. Can't be any worse, can it? Um Tate, yes. Tate, Tate yes. Tate. Tate, 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 Tate. Me and Liam are firmly on the Dylan Tate train. How was the... Firmly on it. Did you go on Friday night, Greg? Nah. Or did you just patch it? I, well, I, uh, Liam's got a sore back. Oh. Well, he did have a sore back, so we're a couple of invalids at the moment. Aye, for those that don't know, Greg's fucked. Yeah. Um, right. Uh, do we need to cover any Which more? Dave Graham will be delighted to hear. <laughs> do we need to know? Do we need to do any more on Mike's question, Harry? Just like around Tavares and Tate, we've spoken enough about the midfield uh, three, but uh, yeah, I, 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 I'm still not opposed to trying Tavares off the bench a couple of more times. Um, not like I, I reckon, give him a good half hour or so in games that we're struggling to stretch teams because yeah. even though he's shown that he gets brushed off the ball, he's still really pacey, so worth a shot. And then Tate. Technically, he's a better player than Campbell, so I don't understand why we wouldn't try and fit him in the team. Okay. Uh, Aiden, I would good. also, uh, this might be controversial, but Tate probably adds more than Joe Newell. Oh, jeez. At the moment, yeah. 18, uh, Aiden, 1875, if no centre-half is signed in time for the Kamarna game, would you agree on bringing Darren McGregor back in to start? Uh, no. McGregor's I'm going to say yes. harder than McClelland. I'm going to say yeah. Genuinely, I would, yes. I'd, I'd rather start McClelland. Why is, why is, what happened to McClelland? Because I didn't see him have any stinkers. Mate, he came on against Lovey, and then he's not been in the squad since, I think. I, don't even uh, I, thought, yeah, actually, I thought it was actually right against Lovey. I thought he dealt with Nibley quite well. But... And he was decent in the cup, but I don't understand why that boy's just fallen off the face. Alan Falkirk, he was shite at Falkirk. 
Uh, nah, to be fair, everybody in the world was shouting Falkirk. That's yeah, just right. the Falkirk, eh, you? <laughs> Lewis hey, I'm not going to be boy. there any longer, bro. Hey. Never even made it. Still going to get slagged for it, though. Uh, right. Kevin Wilson, deadline day on Thursday. I think it is Wednesday, unless we fucked it up. Uh, any specific player we want signed? Sorry, already touched on it. but yeah, uh, uh, let, Let's actually think. Is there anyone realistic that jumps to our minds? One for me. I know I've said it's not. It's a realistic one in the sense he should be available. Connor Ronan is still at Wolves. Um, however, mm. I do think we do need to prioritise a striker and a centre half over a sort of attacking midfielder, but he is still at Wolves, so it would suggest to me he should be available in some capacity. He's not been in the match day squad. Another one, um, we were linked with early in the window is Elliot Anderson, but he's played for Newcastle twice in the last week in the Cup and came off the bench yesterday and looked fantastic. So He was too if, good for this level. Yeah, if, if it was to become available, we would need to be all over it, but I don't see that. <laughs> What about you guys? Any names um, to think uh, of? Liam Lindsay. <laughs> Harry McCarthy. I, 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 honestly, Jing, I'm on this train like forever. <laughs> so are we all. Um, Harry McCarthy, it's not priority, but I think it would be a good signing. Um, and let's free Dylan Levitt. Free Dylan <laughs> Levitt. He doesn't deserve nine 0 defeats. He deserves one 0 defeats away to St. Murren. Come on, get him home. Nah, he'll get away. Um, no. I'm not the one like that. Right. Uh, next. Junior. Uh, Scott Junior. Do you think a midfield of Kenna or Kenneth? Uh, Kenna, Campbell, and Henderson would work. Newell is too inconsistent, doesn't try hard enough when he's not playing well, and Jake Doyle hates awful. Look, I don't agree with what he said after the question mark. I don't, I don't, I, the one thing I would accuse, there's not one thing I would accuse Joe Newell of would be a lack of effort uh, it's not something that I would say I don't think he goes hiding in games either I think he does <laughs> yes that doesn't mean he always he, he loses the ball fairly regularly but I feel like he always wants to get on it um, and I, I actually think Doyle Hayes is a good player um, but I think Kenna Campbell and Henderson could work uh, no it couldn't work okay why so any, any, any substance to that I think so okay um, nah. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> Henderson and Campbell together. And, uh, I I, I'm not having it. I'd rather yeah. if it was Doyle Hayes and Campbell, absolutely. But I just, yeah, I don't know. Or Doyle Hayes and Henderson. I think. I think Henderson, Henderson and Campbell both did their the best of their yeah. work when they don't need to be too deep. Correct, and we just sit so deep. Harry, um, I. I... I think it'd be better than the midfield three we started the other day, but I don't think it'd be much better. Okay. Uh, I think yeah. no midfield would be better than the, the starting <laughs> midfield the other day. Mate, it'd be the exact same they're result. They're non-existent. <laughs> right. Hayley. Uh, Hayley. No steak pies at the ground. Thoughts? No, an issue for me. Don't like steak pies. Uh, thoughts on calling for no, the Let me ask you ask that question there. I'm going to read out the full question. You can answer that. Uh, and then also thoughts on calling for the manager's head. Seen a few posts and I just don't think sacking the manager now is going to bring in anyone who is even half decent. Uh, no, anyone that wants Lee Johnson sacked right now is a fucking moron. We need some stability and you need to give them time. Um, what's your guys' thoughts on the steak pies and Lee Johnson's uh, future? Steak, the fact there's no steak pies is an abomination. I, know there, I think there's a Donna kebab pie. Um, so Marin always would be decent first grant, to be fair. Um Calling for the manager's head would require a big payoff and we can't even buy a fucking centre-half. So let's not get another manager on the payroll. I think that would take us up to three. Uh, Ross can't be on it now, surely, if he's got a new job. Hopefully not. Although, to be (laughs) fair, they may be back in the door shortly. Um, I think I believe in diversity. I fight for the people, so steak pie should be available everywhere. Apologies that happened to you, Hayley. Um, And... People, I've seen th- there's the key comment of people wanting Johnson out. That's what happens when you hire a man a jambo as a manager. It's like fuck off. They're just a bunch of idiots. Um, I best left ignored. I would say. Uh, right, Scott Craig twenty one. Can we all now accept that Newell isn't a player and never has been? Him and Jake Doyle Hayes are not good enough. Um, also, the owner and recruitment team really need to be held to account about this. In quotation marks, amazing window. Why are three new signings all that's good enough to start? Also, can we drop Cadden ran over? Um, 
Look, what was the first part of that question, sorry? Can we accept that Newell isn't a player and never has been? Him and Jake Lyle Hayes are not good enough. Look, we've we've done enough. Joe Newell shows it in, in glimpses, Jesus. but doesn't do it enough. Yeah. Which is frustrating. And I actually still I, I like Jake Doyle Hayes. I've said that enough tonight, but yeah. I, I still think I, he's a good I do option. like Jake Doyle Hayes, to be fair. I, I think when Jake Doyle Hayes isn't five yards away for Joe Newell, he's good. But Joe Newell brings out the worst in him, to be honest. So why would we not try Jake Doyle Hayes without Joe Newell? Joe Newell doesn't, doesn't deserve to be starting games at the moment. We so... did. We did in the Clyde game. Well, there we go. We scored so... five goals. I don't, I don't, I don't, I'm not saying that that's there. Yeah, that was a really weird game, though, because Christian Deutsch managed to score three goals. True. Um, but I, I, I would, I would rather us, us try Jake Dolhays without Junior. I don't think Junior deserves to be starting at the moment. Yeah. So, Harry, uh, you're not getting to talk about the first half of that question. We spent enough time talking about Dolhays and Newell. Uh, owner and recruitment team really need to be held accountable about this amazing window. I don't think anyone's on record as saying we've had an amazing window um, from the club, but why are three new well, signings all that's good enough to start? Also, can we drop Cadden? Um, I'm on board with the dropping Cadden. Yeah. There's um, not three new signings that are starting, though. There's four. Well, aye. You've got Boyle. Marshall, oh, yeah. Shubraya, Ewan and Boyle. So and then there's four. If you... If, if we're including the big number that's getting quoted about Hibs signing 13 players, you and Henderson started, what, all bar one league game? Yeah. I know people won't view... Rocky, again, if you're including this big 13 number, Rocky and Henderson are both in that in that pool as well. Can we, um, can we normalise signing players that aren't starters, please? Because they, they can get signed for depth. And options just because just because they've been signed this window doesn't mean they, they start. Mm. So can we normalise that, please? Because doesn't just because they've been signed in the summer doesn't mean they go straight into starting eleven. They could be here for depth, or as we just seem to do at the moment, development purposes. Do you think that the issue is that none of the players? Had, I don't think we've signed any bad players. I'm I'm not looking at any one of the players and saying like. You're Ian never Marder. you're you're never going to cut it here, but what we haven't done outside, outside, ready -made out, players outside, uh, outside of maybe the guys he's talking about, I'd assume in the three he's talking about are Chibraya, Boyle, and Marshall, who are mm. very of Chibraya looks a good player. Whether he's a massive upgrade on Josh Doig or not. It's probably jury still out, but a good player, a good solid replacement. Marshall's an obvious upgrade. Boyle's obviously a massive upgrade on what we had in the second half of last season. I still think Yuan's a better option as well than what we've had available. Like, I don't think any of the players are bad, but ultimately, we I agree in the sense that we probably needed six that we could hang our hats on and say they will start every week. We need ready made players. Uh, I just think that, that um, a, a team that equally needed a massive overhaul was Aberdeen, and I think they've done a much better job than we did um, and in terms of a recruitment team, in terms of getting players out and in. I think they've just done a much better job and more professional job of it. I don't think they're comparable, though. Just because they've had that much more money to spend. Look at the money. Look, I know that. I know that's hard. I know, they, but yeah. the money they've had available to spend this summer is light years more than what we have right. Lewis Ferguson went for the same as what Josh Doig went for they then sold Calvin Ramsey for what nine million pound uh, or potentially that isn't that like as well as they ultimately do have more money than us you know I'd imagine right. they probably got a payoff for Scott McKenna getting promoted to the Premier League as well there, there had to be signing that contract you know like as as well like since the first game of the season Aberdeen's fixtures have been all right. Like they've they've played Livingston at home, Motherwell at home, and St Mirren at home. Two of the games they've been playing against ten men for an hour, and the one that they didn't, they got beat and got beat comfortably. They beat St Johnston one 0 with a free kick. Like I'm not. It's early in the season. If Aber like I know I know it sounds so bad, but if Aberdeen don't win this weekend, don't know who they're playing, and we do, we're back to a point behind them. I think. Like, it, uh, it is early in the season, and like I do think their striker looks good, but again, his goal numbers right now are boosted by penalties. However, as a Hibs fan, I know that 
penalties are not given goals. So, yeah, I think on paper so far, Aberdeen seem to have done well. And I think as well what it has shown, though, is when you're in that scenario, how important the League Cup can be. They've done really well in the League Cup and it's definitely got the fans on board going into the season. They went to Celtic Park, avoided a hammering. You know, like, it's been, we spoke about it, what, two weeks ago in here. We were above them in the league and we were, and they were getting told they'd had a magnificent start of the season. So, yeah. But no, it is, I think it is a fair comparison, but they, there is definitely context to it. Greg, what do you make of that one that Harry brings up? It's difficult. Although well, we are maybe not feeling the greatest of the hubs at the moment. But it's still very early on. Um, the league play settles down about October, November time. That's when you really see teams in positions that probably reflect where they are. Um, the, the striker they've got does look good, but again, it's penalties. He's a stat padder. Um, they've probably seen a couple of no bad players, but I'm not overly concerned that they're going they to create a massive part. points difference between us and them. So. And, and to be honest, the start has been easier than ours, I would say. So, yeah. I think, look, you, you, can look at, you can look at everything pretty much relatively. So. Right, next question. Uh, Peter Henson, have you lads ever inquired about getting an interview with Ron Gordon? Um, Peter, we spoke with Ron with the other podcasts twice over the summer. Mm. And um, but what we are going to try and do is I don't know if you have for anyone that's not listened to it we spoke with Ben Kenso and Ian Gordon um, in February just after the window um, just yeah. after the window had, had went um, in January and we're going to see if we can try and arrange something similar um, once the sort of dust is settled on this transfer window um, because we think there would be good value in it <laughs> Um, for people and we're pretty sure the club would be happy to do it from conversations we've had with them in the past but no guarantees can be given on that obviously because we've we've not really I don't think we've properly asked yet but we're hoping to do so well, along similar so to, to get a fence I said the transfer windows are 3 out of 10 um, we'd be lucky to reach positive figures at the moment <laughs> Uh, ben 1875 is it time for Ian Gordon and the recruitment team to be emptied um, my answer on it's no um, because it's still oh, fucking it August happen. it's still August as well like no centre back comes in get them emptied so happy with that <laughs> right uh, Dan Taylor would you like to see Hibs operate with a sporting director or someone in that capacity yes please that yes. is a there should be, I think, Ben Kenzo, again, has had a lot of critics, and Greg talks about earlier. But as the CEO, you can't dispute the stuff he's done from a business point of view. Um, and, yeah, I would just, personally, I would like to see a little bit of a bridge in, a bridge in there between um, the sort of manager and then the recruitment and the CEO. I, yeah. would, like, I would like to see someone in there. Um I think, if we're being honest, we've seen Graham Matthew do that to quite good effect until he actually got even more. You no, know, I think when, like, if you look at the role that he played when Dempster was here, um, the recruitment, I would say, we made a lot of good sporting decisions, if you like. Um, I think it would be good to get someone back in that role. Harry, what do you, what do you think? I think it makes sense. Um Obviously, don't want to big them up, but if you look at the impact that Savage has had on the transfers at Hearts, um, and it just, I think someone with a philosophy that they can work with the club on the type of player they want to bring in, I think for the most part, the players we've brought in are youngsters, and I think that bringing in youth's great, but I don't think we've got anybody capable of bringing in impact players, as Greg said, ready-made players for the first team, and hopefully, if we got someone, they'd be able to do that, because it's something that we've lacked now for a good few years. Uh, Jack Kell 1875 what's your go-to breakfast um, in terms Indeed of enjoyment or in terms of day-to-day life enjoyment but let's, let's talk mm-hmm. Saturday morning we're no, we're no in a rush being healthy before work we're talking enjoyment do what not have mate? breakfast on a Saturday ever weirdo Sunday morning hangover cue uh, 
I'm an athlete, Harry, so you've got a game on a Sunday with <laughs> scrambled eggs. I don't go out on a Saturday ever. Um, my go-to is, if I'm having a breakfast roll, I get link sausage and thighs gone. One of my mates' mums, when I was younger, um, made a fry-up and she put it on a wrap. And it was unbelievable. Oh, mate, I did have a, a, a fuck oh. that is gone. Square sausage, bacon and cheese into wraps. Oh, Get an egg on there as well. Why not? Mate, it was a full shebang. It was honestly oh, the best breakfast I've had. hash browns as well. Cannot forget hash browns. Get it all involved, mate. Shut up. You did eat breakfast. <laughs> You're right. I don't know. <laughs> By the way, if, 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 anyone, look, if anyone's ever uh, in sort of West Edinburgh in the Gale region, um, and we're talking about breakfast, um, what, Greg, what's that gaff called? Um... The hotel, not the hotel, the pub, the, the Carvery place. What? Oh, Westgate Farm. Westgate just Farm, just it. along for the guy. I think it's three pounds fifty. For my mate. Uh, it's a buffet style breakfast. You get a specific amount of sausage, bacon, and an egg. I think, and yeah, then and everything, you else. everything else. Patty scones, hash browns, haggis, all the beans, everything else. It's whack on as much as you want. There was a period of time where myself and Greg, along with others at work, were going every Friday and safety. Yeah, I honestly haven't been the there in years, three, mate. The first three hours uh, of work that day were an absolute right off. I've not been well before COVID. Good times though. But yeah, that'd be a recommendation for breakfast. Uh, Dan Taylor, can you give any advice to someone who's struggling to be the best version of themselves? I thought it was just fine margins, but that's not the case. Asking for a friend. Get yeah, Christian Deutsch to defend corners. <laughs> Isn't that right, Harold? Um, I I, th- I think if you avoid nine 0 defeats in life, then you're 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 going somewhere. So I'd say just avoid nine 0 defeats, and you'll be all right, mate. Mm-hmm. I'd say so. Look, he's don't get me wrong, he's angry. Like he, he's oh, angry. Oh, I'm angry. Oh, I'm angry. Oh. <laughs> they weren't, well, they weren't good enough in, in certain <laughs> aspects of their game, so. No, but he set him up to be defensively robust. Um, I'm not playing a midfield and just playing a <laughs> load of defenders in that way. Yeah. In seriousness, how funny is that picture of Jack Ross masterclass? Like, it actually makes me laugh every time. That is a solid like on Twitter every time I see it. Like, it is a good one. See, for someone that's so fashion conscious, and I'll give him his due, he does dress well. What does he? How is he? How is, how is he let that photo he's unveiling be allowed to, with the scarf and the right. shorts and the shirt? And the, oh. Anyway. <laughs> Ryan Melville, will Joe yes. Newell be booked in every game he plays this season? It fucking feels like it, man. I feel like if you put, if you were able to put a one of Joe Newell, Ewan Henderson, or Chibriah to be booked bet on, if you put that on every see every game, you'd be fucking Gucci. Mm. Joe Newell does like a pointless booking. A pointless Loves booking him. in the middle of the in the middle of the park mm. when the ball's going out for a throw already. <laughs> Uh, right, fuck, I didn't realise how many questions I was. We're going to have to start doing some of these. Uh, Harry, let's come to you on this one. Jeff Ashton, as an ex-centre forward, I'd be screaming at Cadden to cross the ball first fucking time instead of fannying about, push, passing it back. That way I would be moving onto the ball instead of standing still waiting. Doesn't excuse some of Dodge's play, touch, movement, but is it a factor? Yeah, definitely. I think um, lately I'm touching it well last week, like Jabriah can kind of take the ball in his stride when he's crossing it, but Cadden kind of needs to set it up and even when he does set it up he's still not putting it in particularly great areas so yes I'd agree it must be a frustrating thing for a striker Any further Greg? As I said a half his crosses must be very very easy to deal with mm. uh, Greg no sure maybe if you've had this conversation at the dinner table tonight um, but your mother We actually haven't <laughs> we actually haven't I know exactly what's coming but we haven't had a conversation <laughs> um, <laughs> Do you think our current performance and form is the manager's fault or the player's fault or a bit of both? What's the view of ours? Uh, firstly, shout out to Elaine for a 10 out of 10 spag ball tonight. Super. Um, what do I think? I, I think I think it's the players, to be fair. Um, you can you can question Johnson's tactics or whatever, but ultimately... I don't know if football cliches about this, but he can't control what goes on in that pitch himself. He's relying on their players to, to, to go out and and perform. They're not doing it. So ultimately, he's been let down by the players. The fans have been let down by the players. So the form is 
play 100% on the players, to be honest. I mean, they haven't been good enough. Yourself, Specs. Um, first of all, um, thank you, Elaine, for keeping our Greg well fed. It's much appreciated, and I'm sure you've done a great job. The spag ball. Um, <laughs> and, on your question, <laughs> and on your question, um, I, I think that there was a dodgy team selection at the weekend, so I think that Johnson needs to air the brunt of that. But he has been trying to change things when they haven't been going right, so I do think there's an attitude problem. Um, as we touched on a few times last season, I think the loser mentality is not quite being stamped out, and I don't think that's on Johnson. Um, I think that some of the senior players, i.e. McGeady, need to be there to help stamp that out. Um, and it's not just the manager. But I, I would say a bit of both is a fair assessment, but mainly the players. Yeah, I'm um, I'm fully in the park of the players. Um, good question, Elaine. Sure Lee, very good question. For sure me, I, I've spoken about it enough this already, but Lee Johnson's tactics put Chris Cadden in a position to cross the ball. Lee Johnson doesn't control where said cross ends up. Correct. Like and uh, like, Chris Cadden you, doesn't seem like he can control it either. Uh, and I'm not saying in the, like Cadden wouldn't be in the but you know he sets up a team to have a lot of fucking supremacy on the right hand side against St Mirren, which we had through Boyle and Cadden, and neither of them made the most of it. I don't know how much that you know. What I mean, for me, the manager gets the credit for that. The players then have to bear the brunt of it for not uh, for not carrying it through. But yeah, Stephen Bell. With only one win from three games against teams who finished in the bottom six last season so far, do you think Hibs are in genuine risk of relegation slash the, the relegation playoff spot this season? My real worry is that we are. There's been no real improvement whatsoever. Uh, and then actually someone's responded to him with an interesting point. Uh, Lemon, last season Hearts and Rangers would have beaten us. We probably wouldn't have won at St. Johnson. So in my, my mind, there has been an improvement, but not much, just a small amount. I sort of agree with both. Like, I don't think we're at risk of being relegated. I think we spoke about yeah, that no, earlier. I don't, I'm not worried about that. But And I do agree with the the, the, the reply below it. I think last season we, we don't come back in the Rangers game and we don't come back in the Hearts game. Mm. Probably don't win at St. Johnston either. It's just piecing it together for the 90 minutes, isn't it? Which is should be pretty basic, I would think. Mm. Harry? Um, as I said before, I don't think we're at risk of relegation. I don't think we've improved yet, but I don't think we've declined further. So I think we're in a steady spot. Uh, final question. Sean Steele, who would win out a fight, Paul Hanlon or Jack Ross? Greg's the referee. Greg gets to give um, his decision last, I think, because obviously it was directed at Greg. Um, with Greg in the ring, um, I reckon that as the referee, he kind of has like, free reign to do what he wants, so I reckon there's a few extra jabs. And I reckon Greg probably punches Jack Ross a bit harder than he punches Paul Hanlon as referee. So I'm going to say that that damage causes Paul Hanlon to win the fight. I'm going to say that Paul Hanlon wins the fight pretty comfortably. Two absolute cowards. <laughs> um, I win the fight. Right, right. see you in the fight. <laughs> <laughs> Referee walks it with a belt. <laughs> <laughs> Raises his own hand up. <laughs> uh, right. Harry, I can't, I, look, see, see if I was in a ring with Paul Hanlon and Jack Ross, there's no danger I would be able to resist the temptation to bang <laughs> them both with their shoes. So I would win. Right. right. Sean, well, great question. The, he's Good redeemed question. himself there, has he? Right. A little bit. That'll just about do us. When we started the questions, I said this was going to be a short episode. I think the questions took us about 35 minutes. Uh, we'll be back on Wednesday night with our live episode. I'd imagine that'll be available for anyone to catch up on on YouTube afterwards. I doubt it'll be available on, available on Spotify and Apple afterwards. Um, it might be, but to be honest, I might just keep it on YouTube for that one. Um, because we, we're hoping that at least it's going to be semi-visual as well uh, and by visual we mean for those that have seen it Liam's going to have an XL sheet yay <laughs> uh, no. exciting times <laughs> but yeah we'll be back on Wednesday night and then we'll be back next Monday cheers Bye. God bless <laughs>